Okay, so last time on why educational games should be awesome, we talked about the Penn's theory of motivation and how Penn's theory talks about designing mechanics to satisfy needs for competence, autonomy, and relatedness in order to foster intrinsic motivation to play that game. Now what's really nice about this is if you create a game like that, not only will it be something that people want to play, but it has the potential to naturally foster interest in whatever the game is about because it's connected to those things that they find intrinsically motivating already. And we see all the time that you make a good game people want to play, it can get people interested in what that game is about. So this is really exciting for educational games because you have that potential, right? If you make a well-designed game about science, you might help foster interest in science. One of the big problems that's been found with previous educational games is they didn't well integrate the subject with the gameplay. I'll give you an example. Say you want to get kids interested in, I don't know, math problems involving angles. Say you always see the kids playing games where they're navigating mazes. Say, okay, that's easy. I'll make a maze game and, oh wait, how will I integrate these math problems into it? I know. I'll make locked doors in the mazes that you have to open by answering questions about angles. Problem solved. I'm a genius. The issue is your core mechanic of navigating the maze, what the students are already motivated to do, what they find engaging, is completely unrelated to that content about answering the math problems. In fact, those locked doors with the math problems actually serve as an obstacle to the part of the game that the students do enjoy. And there's an argument this implicitly communicates to the students who are playing the game that these problems are not fun, they are the work you need to do in order to get rewarded with the fun part, navigating the maze that you enjoy. And you'll notice that you could easily replace the math problems with like geography questions because it's completely unrelated to the gameplay. On the other hand, let's say you want to make a game that integrates the content in. What sort of game does this content naturally fit into? What sort of challenges can I address with these skills? So maybe you make an artillery game where you solve problems about angles in order to hit a target. Now the content you want to teach is well integrated into the game. You need to learn that content in order to achieve your goal. So if you have a game that is motivating, now it's fostering interest in that content. The game is demonstrating how learning that content helps you achieve your goals. Now it's implicitly communicating how learning this is useful to goals you have, rather than an obstacle to doing those things. This is why for educational games to be most effective, they really need to tightly integrate the content with the mechanics of the game. And you'll notice that when you tightly integrate the content, it can't easily be replaced. It's closely connected to the challenges of the game. And not just in educational games, if you're making like awareness games or any other game where you're trying to convey something to the player. That's why it's important to figure out the interplay between the content and the design. What does your design implicitly communicate about the content? How do you make sure that design serves the goals you have as a designer? For example, does it convey that this is something useful and relevant or something difficult and arbitrary? Okay, so now we've sort of started to address why educational games should be really good, but it's easy to make ones with issues if you aren't careful about the design. So next time we're going to dig into instructional styles both in games and the classroom. So until then, consider how you've learned things from different games and people over the years. 